Hi folks, and thanks for clicking on the video. If you're a generator, your Honda generator, uh, this one's a EU2000i, is running like this, then you need to watch this video. This was a cheap, simple fix, took a little bit of carb cleaner, and some basic maintenance anyway that the machine needed. Here, I'm getting ready to do the maintenance. As you can see, the model number of the unit. So if you have a little trouble getting this cover off here, take a little flathead screwdriver and just pop it off. This is where the spark plug resides. Yes, folks, it has a spark plug down in there. You need to pop that spark plug, move it off carefully, make sure you do not break it. Otherwise, you're in for a world of hate. Take yourself a 5 8 uh, spark plug socket and a couple of extensions. Now, I had already broken mine free with the ratchet, but go ahead and make sure you lefty loosey to break that free and just unscrew the old spark plug. Now, we're going to take the new one out, compare it to the old one, just check our gaps, make sure nothing was damaged in you know, packaging or anything. And then we're going to reinstall the plug opposite of the way we did it. Now I, I do a lot of spark plugs, I do a lot of mechanical work, so I kind of have my own hand torque wrench here. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with your own hands and you're worried you're going to tighten that down too much or break the spark plug or whatever, grab yourself a torque wrench and look up the actual specs on the torque. So that way you can torque it to that amount of foot pounds, inch pounds, whatever they require. And right about now is when we're going to go click. Might as well early there. Quarter turn past click. So then, you know, you're gonna put that spark plug loop back on. Make sure it clicks. Make sure it clicks, guys. When you put it on there, make sure it's on there snugly and nicely and the proper way. You definitely aren't going to get it started after that if, if, you, if you don't do that. Now on this side, after I turn it around, I realized the machine wasn't off, shut that off. You take a flathead screwdriver, you can take that cover right off. Take that same flathead screwdriver, you can take the air filter cover off. Real easy. Not a lot of tools required here at all. And this machine hasn't seen much use, just a lot of sitting. Uh, so we're kind of just doing some maintenance and making sure it's ready to go in case it's needed. In case that zombie apocalypse hits us. So here I'm getting ready, I'm going to drain the oil. The oil drains from where this little plastic uh, dipstick slash drain plug is located. So get yourself an oil pan, pick the thing up, it's not that heavy, drain it out. You should run it a little bit beforehand, that way the oil gets warm, drains out a little faster, and you'll get more contaminants and debris out of the engine that was sitting in there in the oil. And we're about done draining. Time to clean up that mess. Alright, let's get rid of that. We'll pretend that took care of itself. No, that took me a few minutes on top of this. Clean this off a little bit. Make sure none of that old nasty oil is floating around. Clean off your dipstick. Grab yourself a fresh quart of oil. Open that sucker up. Now don't forget, this is a very small hole. You're not pouring it in from the quart. Get yourself a funnel that'll fit in the hole. I like to use this little blue one. Works really well. I believe they sell it at AutoZone. And pour in, I believe it was something like 
half a quart. I poured a tad too much, so a little bit ran out on me there. Uh, my hands were quite slippery too, so I had a little bit of trouble putting the drain plug back, well, dipstick, sorry, back in. But uh, make sure you don't cross thread that. That is made of plastic. You're screwing it into metal. It will cross thread. Make sure it lines up nice and just thread it in easy. If it doesn't go in, start going in easy, you're doing it wrong. And like I said, about a half a quart, I think it took something like that, hair or less. So now we're going to give it a try, give it a start, see if that fixes the issue for us. Even though I have a very good feeling that it did not do the trick, but what I like to try to do first, I'll get a machine running, grab myself a little bit of carburetor cleaner. Should be right back. There I am. All right. We got ourselves some carbon. It's a very low shot in there. Don't let it die. Don't let the machine run or shut off. Just a little, little shot at a time. It's the one I was using at the time. Now hopefully that fixes your problem. If it doesn't fix your problem, then you need to keep watching this video. I will show you how to take the carburetor apart and fix the problem. I got it running, it still didn't want to stay running on anything but choke. So back off with the cover. Now you're going to have to take a few things off again. You need an 8mm socket and a small ratchet and a 10mm socket and that flathead screwdriver. So you're going to take the air filter back out. Then take that 8mm, I was having a little difficulty, I don't know what my issue was. Unscrew the two 8mm nuts that are bolting the air filter housing onto the carburetor. Once you get those two off, I didn't see it at first because of the angle I was at, but there is a third fastener for this air filter housing as I soon find out down at the bottom there that is also eight millimeters so go ahead and break that free my hands were a little slippery I got that loose and then the air filter housing you just wiggle it off it's nice and it should come off pretty easy watch your gaskets on the carburetor make sure you don't tear those because that that will affect the way it runs if you do tear them replace them don't just put something on there replace them now here I'm struggling a little bit with the one breather hose that's on the back of the air filter housing so I go I'm like might as well grab this trusty snap-on mini pry bar that I spent way too much on and you'll hear a little pop it, it it sounds like I broke something but really I didn't it was just the hose breaking free of the plastic and then what I ended up doing was taking a pair of line crimping pliers uh, they're just plastic hose crimping pliers to shut off the fuel source now this does have a vacuum fuel pump on it. So at first I thought I was going to need the needle nose to get the fuel line off, but truly you could just pull it off by hand and then right back on by hand too. That It really is very easy to get off. And then I also took the vacuum supply that powers the fuel pump off just to give myself some more clearance there. Okay, clearance. Now that we got the carburetor out, we could switch to the 10 millimeter and take that bowl off the bottom. 
just looking over the carburetor, make, seeing how it's put together. This is the first time I had this machine, this particular machine apart. Uh, we're going to go ahead and break it free, and then it should just spin right out nice and easy. None of this stuff needs to be tightened down extremely hard. Like, you're working with small, fine thread stuff, guys. Don't go crazy. Don't break out your impact gun and sit there and go da 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 on it. So the bowl wasn't really all that dirty. That, that looked pretty decent. So what we're going to do now is actually just clean the whole carburetor now that I have it off. You can only take so much of it apart. So you pull the grenade pin there. <laughs> Just kidding. The pin for the float and the needle. Just don't lose it. It is very small. Now this particular needle kind of shocked me. It was made out of plastic. But to get it out, you just pushed up on it and slid it over to where the hole was big enough to drop it out. Now there is a spring on it, but it will stay on it on this particular carburetor. Usually they're metal. I, I, I don't know. This is something new to me. So now I'm going to take the carburetor cleaner and go through and now watch your eyes because stuff comes out of all different holes. But be careful and go through and spray out every little orifice every little hole you can find in there and give it a good cleaning. That should free up whatever is blocking it up if you don't see anything obvious blocking it. It's probably a small particle of something of some sort in one of those small passages. Usually with a good shot of the tarp cleaner it'll blow it out and you won't even see it. it, it it'll just be gone could be a little fuel breakdown, a little ethanol breakdown, a couple different things. I'm just going back through and you know making sure everything's good. Probably a little overkill, but I'm extremely thorough when I do these things. I don't like having to do things twice. I prefer to do it once. Now We're going to put the seat back in the bowl, or I'm sorry, in the float. Uh, same way you took it out. Push it up through the big hole and slide it over. The spring will stay on it. And then put, rest that needle back into the seat. Line up your holes. Put your pin back in for the float. easier to just do it by hand um, trying to hold it with a tool and line it up is quite difficult sometimes now you shouldn't have any issue pushing that through once it's through it should move freely make sure that float moves freely if that float isn't moving freely there's something wrong there now we're gonna line back or line up our bowl because it needs to orientate a certain way which actually once I got the carburetor partially in there I had to readjust I had it close but not quite exactly where it needed to be so here I am I'm taking the carburetor back off I put the gasket on the carb for the bowl place the bowl on the carburetor so that the gasket seats nicely and the hole lines up. Put that bolt back in there. Now, don't force it. Make sure it goes in nice and easy. And then we're going to give it a little tighten down at the end. Not a lot. Just so it's nice and snug. Don't, don't go haywire. Now we're going to start reinstalling the carburetor. Get your vent hoses back down towards that hole. Get the two studs lined up on the carburetor. That puppy should kind of slide right back in there. 
you may have to move some of your lines back out of the way. And then I reconnected my fuel line. As I said, you could just push it back on. It was not very hard at all. Now I, this is where I noticed that I needed to move the bowl. So I all I did while it was on there, gave it a turn or two loose and spun the bowl. So that way the gasket didn't move. Nothing moved. It just, just the bowl was able to move. Tightened it back down. Let's get rid of those hose crimping pliers. We don't need those now. We're going to grab the air cleaner housing. You want to make sure you put your vacuum line back on for that fuel pump. That is something I overlooked the very first time I went to go put the cover on, but then I noticed it shortly thereafter. Uh, that's not actually in the video here. Maybe I'll put that in a bloopers outtake or something like that one of these days. Line up your three hole, well your two bolt, uh, studs and your one hole for the bolt. After you get the hoses connected, which as you can see I have it a little crooked right now. I had something off there. I figured, you know, got it back to where it needed to be. I figured it would be a good idea to start with this bowl for alignment purposes. Uh, the other two are kind of already aligned. So once I got that seated properly, I was able to install the bolt easily by hand at first, and then I finished tightening it up with the ratchet. Doesn't need to be super tight, guys. I can't stress that enough. Tight enough, but not over tight. You'll see. So we got that in there. Not totally tight, but almost all the way in. And then we're going to grab our other two 8mm nuts. I'm sorry, the, the two 8mm nuts. And put those back on the carburetor studs. Here I am getting those back on. Get those tight and then we're going to go back and tighten down that bolt and fingers crossed that all worked so we put it on choke now there is a lot of carburetor cleaner in there it may take a few pulls but once you get it started let it run for a second on choke and here's the magic moment is it going to work yes success guys we did it look it And finally, just to show you that it is powering something, I break out the Sawzall. Thanks, guys.